I, as the Emperor, am entrusted by heaven to uphold the principles of heaven and earth, to fight against the excess of Emperor Taizu, to wield the sword of the Emperor, and to pacify disobedient officials. The Eight Wildernesses and Six Harmonies In the whole world, there is no royal land, no leading land, no royal officials, no barbarian countries, all of whom are concubines of Han officials. Normal Group ID 521480716, adding a fully subscribed group must be verified by this group before allowing dog management to add it to the fully subscribed group, keywords of the novel. Returning to the Ming Dynasty as a tyrant with no pop-ups, returning to the Ming Dynasty as a tyrant complete collection download txt, returning to the Ming Dynasty as a tyrant latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Feng Shui takes turns, but when it comes to me, it deviates. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1. Feng Shui takes turns, but when it comes to me, it deviates. Xu Xiaosong feels quite unlucky, really. After pinching his thigh countless times and confirming the surrounding environment countless times, he could finally confirm that he, lying in bed now, had inexplicably woken up as the emperor, carrying all the memories of this emperor. The only problem is that the emperor has just ascended to the throne, but he misses Emperor Daxing too much, which is his brother, so he fainted and is now lying on the dragon bed recuperating. By the way, this emperor's surname is also Zhu, but his name is Zhu Yujian. This is very embarrassing. Even if you call yourself Zhu Hou Zhao, it's okay. Labor and capital wise gentlemen probably can't do it well. Let me be a foolish ruler like Zhu Hou Zhao who only focuses on eating, drinking, enjoying herself, and playing with women. China's history is too long, and if we talk about the legitimacy of the country, there may be no one on the right side of the Ming Dynasty. What was the situation during the Han Dynasty? It's equivalent to Lu Bang and Xiang Yu taking advantage of Hu Hai's family's downfall and jointly owning Qin Shi Huang's second dot hand house, but Lu Bang became accustomed to being a rogue and killed his collaborator before settling down on his own. Speaking of this, it's a pity that Comrade Wang Mang, the first passer of the Han Dynasty, did not give awesome and played off. Otherwise, communism would almost appear in China at the end of the Western Han Dynasty. What about the Tang Dynasty? Because the Lao Yang family did not treat their subordinates well, they decided to start their own business. However, after all, the Li family in Longxi has who ancestry and trusts outsiders too much. With the great power of the Fanjin region, Tang Minghuang had to order someone to send the beautiful woman back to the west at Muepo. Not to mention the Song dynasty, Chai Shizong entrusted an orphan in the front, and an imperial robe was added at the Qinxiao post station in the back deceiving the orphan and widowed mother. Even the last piece of fig leaf. The red letter and iron coupon for the old Chai family. Was lost in Chai Rong's generation. The result was that when he turned around, he was bullied one by one by the great Jin Mongols, and it's no wonder. After all, Zhao Kuanyin had confidently said, if I seize this land, let my descendants take over treacherous officials. So you see, there was a Song dynasty, where there were countless layers of big and small traders, and indeed Feng Shui took turns. As for the three generations of governance, which was greatly praised by Confucianism, it was also the descendants of the Xianyuan family who took turns sitting in power. Only the Great Ming Dynasty can truly be said to have won the world and continued the dress and dress of the Han family by turning the building towards the general and pursuing the Mongolian Yuan in the north. During the 300 years of the reign of the Ming Dynasty, there were all kinds of peculiar emperors, busy with cultivating immortals, playing with women, and working as carpenters, but there were no emperors who were weak in external affairs. Throughout the 300 years of the reign, emperors throughout history did not submit themselves, pay tribute, compensate, or reconcile, truly achieving the goal of the emperor guarding the country's gates, and the king dying for the country. Their bones can be considered the hardest among all dynasties. But after flipping through Chinese history books, there are really not many unlucky people like Emperor Chongzhen Zhu Yujian. According to Ming history records, Emperor Chongzhen was known for his abilities in both literature and martial arts, not being fond of women, 
being diligent in governance and loving the people. In theory, apart from being suspicious and stubborn, Emperor Chongzhen had all the potential of a wise ruler, but he unfortunately perished. Firstly, during the Little Ice Age, it was safe to have a poor harvest of grain. In order to save money or make it easier for oneself to make money, the great scholars of the Donglin party demanded the abolition of post stations, which are now postal services, out of love for the people. So a postal courier surnamed Li, who worked part-time as a chain hotel waiter, found that he couldn't survive after losing his job. So he decided to do the opposite. Since your emperor made it difficult for the labor and management to survive, they might as well take you out first, as for the Donglin party, who were in the prime of power at that time, the emperor cannot collect commercial taxes, otherwise it will be a struggle for profit with the people. As for not having money. That's your emperor's business. As scholars, we don't care about these things. We just manage the world. If you have the ability, you can hit us. The more you fight, the more famous you become. If you kill us, it will be the best for future generations to benefit. The emperor wants to abolish both the genie guard and the east and west factories. Otherwise, are you unable to trust us gentlemen or what? What if the royal guards eavesdrop on us while we're having sex with the 18th concubine who just spent tens of thousands of tails of silver? Are you still letting people make money that is not enjoyable? Do you still want people to make small moves behind their backs? If you don't abolish the genie guard and the Dongxi factory, you are a foolish ruler. As for the later virtues of these righteous gentlemen, let's take a look at the performance of the EMS courier after entering Beijing. Chongjin borrowed tens of thousands of tails of silver, but Li Xiaoga easily got tens of thousands of tails by putting up his knife. This shows that rebellion and money grabbing are the fastest way to get rich, and also indirectly proves that the methods to make money quickly are written in the criminal law as for the later Tungus wild boar skin, most of the great scholars who wanted to go to the national crisis felt that the water was cold. They simply knelt on their knees, shaved their hair, joyfully welcomed the sage, played gongs and drums for a new dynasty, completely forgetting about the might clearing that led to Yang Zhou's ten-day massacre, Jiading's three massacres, and even played enclosure movements and literary prisons. Oh, by the way, especially with the century-old poisonous shaving orders, I don't know why those righteous gentlemen don't think about ancestral traditions when shaving their heads. After all, ancestral traditions also say that the body, hair, and skin cannot be destroyed by their parents, this kind of big might clearing really made these literati praise the prosperous era of Kangxi and Qianlong. Actually, it's not surprising to think about it. After all, during the founding of the Ming dynasty, besides being ruthless in killing people, the later civil servants were like throwing away waves of their own. The killing power of Might Qing was much more ruthless than that of the Ming dynasty, so of course, they had to kneel and lick to survive. As for Emperor Chongzhen of the Ming dynasty, he had never received orthodox imperial education since childhood. His father died early, and his brother Emperor Tianqi was busy working as a carpenter. The courtiers could only believe what they said. He was fooled by the righteous gentlemen of the Donglin party and destroyed the genie guard and the Dongxi factory, losing his last sight, ears, and means of supervision and intimidation. He became completely deaf and blind, and was trapped and killed on the coal mountain by a group of civil and military officials who released himself. It is a pity that only one eunuch remained with this tragic emperor in the end. Fortunately, history has finally given Daiming another chance. I, Zhu Xiao Song, it's not right. It's Zhu Yu Jian, here we are. Labor and capital are not the fools in history. The Dong Lin Party. How dare you call yourself a party? Do you want to form a party for personal gain or rebel? Let me abolish the post station. So what is the royal industry? It abolished the postal system, and you conveyed military information to labor and management. How can my De Shun Fong continue to develop? What is it? Do you still want me to abolish the genie guard and the east factory? Are you making me deaf and blind so that you can rest assured? Does Kai Hai violate ancestral tradition? 
Come on, dear ministers. Before I open the sea, let's talk about the ancestral tradition of stripping the skin and grass for sixty tails of silver. Recently, I plan to add a law that involves three ethnic groups. I feel a little excited when I think about it. Can't the regulations exempt scholars from tax exemption? No problem, merchants are not scholars, just collect their business tax. Can't we collect commercial tax? Is this a struggle for profit with the people? No problem, believe me. As long as I issue an edict that will never increase taxes, the people will stand on my side. As for you righteous gentlemen. Could it be that the knife in my hand is not sharp? Oh, this beloved Ching, are you going to die to remonstrate? Come on, knock this adult to death on the coiled dragon pillar in the main hall for me, and let my EMS system report the mansion to the world. Make sure everyone knows that this adult used death to force me to reclaim my eternal mandate and killed himself. Where is the samurai in front of the palace? Hurry up and help this adult collide. I am a wise ruler, and of course, I will follow the gentleman's wishes. What is it? Do you call me a foolish ruler? Great, slander the king, execute the nine tribes according to the law, Tian urging, what are you waiting for? Take it down, steal the family, and execute the nine tribes. Dong Lin Academy. Do you know that the ancestral system of Taizu does not allow students to discuss politics? If anyone dares to discuss state affairs recklessly, their whole family will be exiled for three thousand miles. The more I want to become more beautiful, the more happy Emperor Zhu is. In the future, labor and capital will be called a generation of saints. It's so amazing. In the future, everything related to Emperor Taizong's reign as the founder of the Tang dynasty will be leaning against me. I am the true emperor for eternity. I definitely want to become the holy ruler of the eternal emperor. The problem I am facing now is how to deal with the empty treasury funds that can run away mice and the righteous gentlemen who specialize in digging corners of the country, even more than mice. After pulling back the thought of starting to deviate, Emperor Chongzhen instructed Wang Chengen, draft an edict to order the British Duke Zhang Weixian to secretly reorganize the capital camp and bring Qin Lianyu and his white troops into the capital. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 does this world belong to me or the Donglin party? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Does this world belong to me or the Donglin party? Chongzhen has no good way to avoid hanging on the old crooked belly tree in the coal mine. However, from the novels read by later generations, it can be seen that these upright gentlemen in the court are unreliable, even if the mountains and rivers are upside down and sows are on trees, these, upright gentlemen, are probably unreliable. However, for the newly crowned Emperor Chongzhen, the environment during the period from the seventh year of Tianqi to the first year of Chongzhen, whether from a political or military perspective, was several hundred times better than the environment three years after Chongzhen. When he first ascended the throne, Wei Zhongxian had not yet been killed by himself. Wei Zhongxian did not die, and the factory guards still have the necessary deterrent and investigative capabilities. This is a crucial issue. In a certain way, Wei Zhongxian, as the emperor's servant, is more reliable than those righteous gentlemen. When the army invaded Beijing in the 17th year of the Chongzhen reign, most of the dead in battle were eunuchs. As for the civil and military ministers and nobles of the Manchu dynasty, except for the British Duke and his faction who died in battle in the frontier, the rest had long been eating rice and rice to welcome the king's army. Of course, these people were eventually forced to hand over all their silver and even their lives by the Chuan Wang, who had been transferred from a courier boy to another job, at least he vented his anger on Emperor Chongzhen. Except for the factory guards, the Qi family army, which frightened the Japanese and Jinnu, no longer exists. However, the white troops that also made Jinnu tremble have not been completely destroyed, and at least there are still some seeds in hand. However, Qin Lianyu, the head of the white army, had little difference in loyalty to the Ming dynasty compared to the British Gongyi faction, and even later dispersed his family wealth to serve the king in Beijing, 
which was much more reliable than other armies. There is also an army mainly composed of Mongolian traders, with Manchuki as the head of the double flower red stick. It was also an army that died in battle while defending the capital and can be relied on. All of these combined are enough to be considered a good hand, but I don't know what the original Emperor Chongzhen thought, and he actually abandoned the powerful weapon of Changwei. The only problem is that Wei Zhongxian and Tian Xingyan will definitely not turn their hearts towards themselves, and may even suspect that the death of Emperor Tianqi will benefit them the most. If this problem is not solved, these two guys will definitely become estranged from themselves, and even constantly try to find ways to solve themselves. And the ultimate result is either being solved by them or being solved by themselves. Regardless of which one, it is a gameplay that belongs to self-harming vitality, which is equivalent to inserting a knife into the already unstable fortune of the Ming dynasty and slowly bleeding. After making up his mind, the freshly baked Emperor Chongzhen simply ordered, Wang Chengen, to order the genie guard Tian urging in Wei Zhongxian to come and see me. Wang Chengen, when Emperor Chongzhen hanged Maishan, the only eunuch accompanying him, along with others such as Fang Zhenghua, who claimed to be invincible in the east, had already died in a fierce battle. When Wei Zhongxian and Tian Erjing came to see Chongzhen, Chongzhen was reading a book of the Three Kingdoms in his hand, occasionally flipping a page. Old slave Wei Zhongxian, Minister Tian Erjing, count out to my emperor, long live long live long live. Chongzhen, who was behind the imperial case, remained expressionless and didn't ask the two of them to lie flat. He just kept looking at the three kingdoms, flipping a page from time to time, but never spoke. Kneeling below, Wei Zhongxian and Tian Legging speculated in their hearts about the purpose of Emperor Chongzhen's late night summoning of the two, but they were not at all sure which one it was. They were worried that there might be 500 swordsmen lurking behind the tent, but at the same time, they felt that there might be other issues. As time went by, the two of them were thinking more and more, and their hearts became increasingly unclear about what Emperor Chongzhen was thinking. Just as the two of them were already sweating fine hair on their foreheads, Emperor Chongzhen behind the imperial case muttered to himself, I remember my brother promised me back then that this dragon chair could be used for me to sit on, but I didn't want it to become a prophecy. My heart aches deeply when my elder brother passed away early. However, in my opinion, the incident of my elder brother's early death is not ordinary as soon as Wei Zhongxian and Tian Erjing uttered these words, fine sweat and cow hair began to emerge from their foreheads. These words were clearly not something that Emperor Chongzhen, who was close to the Donglin evil party and almost brainwashed into a righteous gentleman, could say. And now the two of them have clearly been exposed by Emperor Chongzhen's thoughts, whether they are alive or dead today is really hard to say. Wei Zhongxian was about to speak up to defend himself, but suddenly he heard Emperor Chongzhen say again, Zhongxian, you were also by your side when your brother went. Your brother called you diligent, loyal, and capable of planning big things. Now it seems that you truly deserve the word loyalty. Dot. Wei Zhongxian felt even more fearful in his heart. Emperor Chongzhen's words were all praising himself, but they sounded awkward and awkward. Accompanied by a gentle breeze brushing over the main hall, the shadows behind the curtain seemed to let Wei Zhongxian see countless swordsmen ambushing. But Wei Zhongxian never figured out how to answer Emperor Chongzhen's words, after all, every word was good, not a word was to pour dirty water on himself, and there was no way to defend himself. While feeling anxious and fearful, Emperor Chongzhen spoke up again, however, since the founding of the Ming Dynasty, except for Emperor Taizu Gao and Emperor Qingzu, the deaths of all the previous emperors throughout history have been shrouded in mysteries. What do loyal and virtuous people think? That's right, except for the deaths of Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Laozi, which were considered normal for the emperors of the Ming dynasty, the deaths of the remaining emperors were basically not normal and were full of eerie elements. After bowing to Emperor Chongzhen, Wei Zhongxian said, to answer the emperor's words, I am foolish and cannot fully understand the divine will. I hope the emperor can forgive me. Emperor Chongzhen chuckled and said, I don't think you don't know, but you don't dare to know. I'll ask you again, is this the world of mine, 
the world of your 9,000 years old, or the world of Donglin. Wei Zhongxian's mind was spinning, but he couldn't guess the meaning of Chongjin's flippant words. It seemed like he didn't have to die anymore. Is the emperor dissatisfied with the Donglin party? As for the phrase, 9,000 years old, Emperor Chongjin said so, and Wei Zhongxian himself wouldn't take it seriously because it wasn't the point. Before Wei Zhongxian could speak, Chongjin continued, Get up now. Tian urging, Get up too. After thanking the two for their kindness, Chongjin's words frightened Wei Zhongxian and Tian urging, causing them to kneel down again. I have read about the Three Kingdoms and found something very interesting. Even though only a few small officials are needed to win the ten attendants, why does the general still recruit troops from all over the capital? As he spoke, Chongjin looked at Tian urging with a playful expression and said, Is this Jinyui my son's personal army, or is it Wei Zhongxian's 9,000-year-old personal army? A friend of the dead path never dies of the poor path. If you die of Wei Zhongxian, as long as labor and capital can survive, as long as the emperor does not kill himself, even if he immediately takes Wei Zhongxian, then he must let Wei Zhongxian die first. With this idea in mind, Tian Erjing hastily knelt down to apologize and said, Your Majesty, this royal guards is naturally the emperor's personal army. I am loyal to the emperor, and the royal guards are also loyal to the emperor. Chongzhen still let out an expressionless, um, and said to the second person, Get up. For Wei Zhongxian and Tian Erjing, guessing their intentions had almost become an instinct, but Chongzhen's face remained expressionless, making it difficult to guess what he was thinking. The words spoken by Emperor Chongzhen today are eerie and incomprehensible. Are they actually against the Donglin party? Are you still dissatisfied with the factory sanitation? Chongzhen, on the other hand, witnessed the reactions of both of them and was secretly happy. Who wouldn't know how to act? Teacher Chen Daoming's portrayal of Kong Matsi was truly impressive. Let me learn from teacher Chen Daoming's aura. I can't learn it, so I have to learn from those young and fresh actors in the future. My acting skills are not enough, and I have to rely on my facial paralysis to make do with it. Chongjin saw that he was about to strike, so he spoke again. However, he said to Wei Zhongxian, 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 this name is good. However, I hope you are truly loyal. Before Wei Zhongxian could speak, Chongjin's next words made Wei Zhongxian's heart tighten again. Zhongxian, tell me, there are many guard houses in the Ming Dynasty. Why do they become more and more rotten when they get up? That old wild boar skin bullied Ming to this point. Daiming is wealthy all over the world, but why is this national treasury getting poorer and poorer? Do you still need internal funding subsidies from time to time? Wei Zhongxian felt like a mirror in his heart. Is the emperor okay to ask? If it weren't for sacrificing one's own face to collect mining and commercial taxes, relying solely on those mud-legged people to collect taxes, would this Ming dynasty have collapsed long ago and still have to wait until today? In a moment of thought, he thought again. What exactly is this little emperor thinking? This question can never be aimless. Is the emperor also dissatisfied with the Donglin party? On second thought, labor and capital don't have a good impression here in Chongjin, and it's probably hard to escape death in the future. It's better to just lift up the table and bring the grandchildren of the Donglin party into the water for burial. If you go back to the emperor, although Ming is wealthy all over the world, this tax is only collected from the farmers, and how many big sons can the muddy legs have? The truly wealthy are those wealthy businessmen, but they have intricate connections with the Donglin party, and this business tax cannot be collected. Once collected, the Donglin party will once again demand that they cannot compete with the people for profit. As for the barbarians in Liaodong, despite the hardships of Liaodong, many wealthy merchants disregarded the country and privately sold weapons, food, and even intelligence about border troops for their own benefit. They dared to sell them, and over time, Wei Zhongxian didn't say anything else. He said everything thoroughly, but it may not be of much use. He said half and kept half, and let the emperor slowly think about it, not afraid of him thinking, 
but afraid of him not thinking. As long as you can think, even if I Wei Zhongxian cannot escape death, you Donglin party will have to go down to accompany our family sooner or later. Regardless of what Wei Zhongxian thought in his heart, Chongzhen picked up what he had just said and said, So tell me, who really owns this world? Wei Zhongxian couldn't avoid it and said helplessly to Chongzhen, As for the emperor, I am the emperor in this world. The emperor is wise and powerful, shining candles for thousands of miles, and taking orders from heaven. Naturally, he is the ruler of this world. After listening, Chongzhen squeezed out two words without a smile. He he. If there were future generations present, I would definitely hear countless meanings from these two words. Like the air that put your mother in, like LCB, like I bought a watch last year, anyway, there's no shame. But to Wei Zhongxian, these two malicious words were like listening to the sound of heaven. See what this means, the emperor is dissatisfied with the Donglin party. And it's not testing our family. Labor and management really don't need to die this time. It's the turn of those bastards from the Donglin party to die this time. Looking at Wei Zhongxian, whose old face was smiling like blooming chrysanthemums, Chongzhen turned to Tian Urging and said, Tian Urging, I am very disappointed with the royal guards. Tian Urging directly lay on the ground to apologize. Wei Zhongxian was afraid of death, and Tian Urging was equally afraid. Today, this matter seems to have a hint of evil, and the emperor's behavior is completely different from when he was still the king of faith before. The most crucial thing is that when he ascended the throne in the morning during the day, he didn't look like this, but at night, he completely changed to another person. If it weren't for knowing that there was no possibility of any transfer within the imperial palace, Tian Urging would probably have started to doubt whether the emperor had been replaced by another person. Ignoring Tian Urging's plea, Emperor Chongzhen continued, What I want is a commander of the royal guards like Ji Gang, not like Ma Shun. If you can't do it, I can find someone to do it for you. How about that? Upon hearing this, Tian Urging was both surprised and delighted. He was afraid that the emperor would actually find someone to do it for him, because it meant that he was not far from death. He was not only happy that he could survive, but also that in front of others, he was the commander of the truly upright and majestic genie guard. At this moment, Tian Urging knelt down in panic and said, I will definitely use my life force for longevity, and I will never refuse to die. After a chuckle, Emperor Chongzhen finally said to Tian Urging, I will entrust you with a task today. If it is done well, you will still be the commander of the royal guards. If it is done poorly, I will replace it with someone else. The country does not raise waste. Do you understand? Tian Urging complained inwardly, knowing that Chongzhen would throw a pot on his back at this moment, but he didn't dare to say anything. He just lowered his head and said, Please show me. I will do my best and die to the death. Tian Urging ran on the ground, waiting for Chongzhen's orders. After hearing Chongzhen's, No, he said, Thirty days, I only give you one month. I want to know the wealth of the cabinet officials and the six ministers. I don't care what methods or means you use, let me understand this matter. Besides, I don't want to hear those nerds clamoring. Turning his head, Chongzhen turned to Wei Zhongxian and said, And you, please clean up the eunuch party and don't stuff all sorts of goods into it. If one day you really fall into my hands, don't blame me for speaking unpredictably. End of this chapter Chapter 3 I have no golden fingers. Director, change the script. Take the wrong one. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 3 I have no golden fingers. Director, change the script. I took it wrong. When it comes to small things like time travel or rebirth, there is probably no man in China who doesn't want it to happen to him. Not to mention things like Dad Ma and Principal Wang, and not to mention those bad guys. The former is not lacking in anything, and you cannot expect them to have that kind of bloodiness in the latter. Of course, whether through time travel or rebirth, this is a good thing, a great thing for Shida Pu Ben. 
If you bring your golden finger to travel or be reborn, it is Guangdong famous cigarette. Red Double Happiness This is a lesson from history. Take a look at the man surnamed Yang who became a prince in the Ming dynasty. This guy has a piercing soul, and it is said that a dog spoke of him at the beginning. Of course, the protagonist's aura cannot be included, so this guy also had Han Yunyang at the beginning. Probably countless men want to kill him and then snatch Yunyang home. And Zhang Haogu, who was promoted three levels in a row as a talented scholar during the Tianqi era, who was he before his rebirth? That's a government monkey. The test of the alcohol battlefield, lying and flattering. He comes from a professional background, and after passing through his soul, he flatters Duke Wei, trains new soldiers, and also wears a big green hat for Emperor Tianqi. In the end, although this guy didn't treat him as the emperor, that little emperor is his son. Also, Fang Xing, who returned to the Ming dynasty, was just a bug-like existence. He brought two docks back. It is said that there is everything inside, even Gatling that emits blue flames with a clattering sound also, there's that guy surnamed Yun who went back to the Tang dynasty. He brought back a lot of good things and knew everything. He also established a strong relationship with the crown prince at that time and even set up an academy. Finally, he went to see him and passed on the title of Marquis of the State, resting with the state. In summary, if you want to travel or be reborn, at least you need to bring good equipment and get a golden finger. Once again, you also need to master enough poetry in poetry, otherwise how can you pretend to be forced? How can I pick up girls without pretending to be forced? How can I marry a wife without picking up girls? Why are you traveling back without marrying a wife? Alternatively, if you have sufficient knowledge in science and engineering, you can build guns and cannons, and ultimately dominate the world. Even if you have 3,000 palace beauties, it won't be a waste of time. But the problem is, our protagonist, the great, kind, benevolent, and 5,000-year-only saint. His Majesty Emperor Chongjin, he has no golden finger. He is not from an official ape background, nor does he know various physical and chemical skills. That thing he has already returned to his teacher. Every time he chats with the teacher, he talks about whether he can refund the tuition fee. So after waiting for Wei Zhongxian and Tian urging to leave, the wise and powerful Emperor Chongjin began to nag and make Wang Chengen, who was following behind, think that the emperor had caused something unclean today. System. System. Damn it, no assistant. 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 Damn intellectually disabled, no assistant. Then he changed his tone to an extremely cheesy one. Grandpa. Grandpa. Are you there? Damn it, it doesn't seem like he's there either. Now I have a headache. What did Emperor Chongjin do before his travels? To put it bluntly, it's called a software development engineer. To put it bluntly, it's just a programming ape who works hard, a coder who writes code. How did you say that? Program ape, art dog, cannot walk without the moon. There is no hope for the technical skills of this major, unless our emperor first develops electronic tubes, transistors, various integrated circuits, and even lithography machines and other equipment. His divine skill. Writing code. May have practical applications. Now, it's clearly a single soul piercing. Without a golden finger or an old grandfather, Emperor Chongjin was so worried that he often nagged at the sky alone, my golden finger, my ability. Why don't you give me a warehouse like Fang Xing? If not, give me a bunch of gatling that emits blue flames. Wang Chengen thought that his family's prince had suffered from hysteria, and it was a great joke of the 300 years of the national court that the ruler of the Tang dynasty actually became hysterical after ascending to the throne. But for Emperor Chongjin, he really didn't want to hang on the crooked neck tree on the coal mountain 17 years later. Since Golden Finger doesn't have any abilities, and in the end, he doesn't even have a carry-on grandfather, no warehouse, and no gatling flashing blue flames. But it's okay, at least he still remembers some things from later generations. 
At least he has read so many novels, and even if he doesn't remember big and small historical events, he still has an impression, right? Firstly, Wei Zhongxian cannot be taken down. What does Wei Zhongxian do? That is what Emperor Tianqi of Daxing left for Chongzhen to carry money. Without Wei Zhongxian, who will make money for Chongzhen? What will happen if there is no money? At that time, Chongzhen asked Wu Xiang, the general of the Shanheguan customs, how much military pay it would cost to transfer Ningtia cavalry to Beijing for escort, and the answer was one million taels. Chongzhen, who had traveled through later generations, understood one sentence very well. Anything that can be settled with money is not a problem. The problem is that there is no money. Don't mention Chongzhen's internal funds. At that time, Chongzhen's internal funds had already been posted to the national treasury, and what about the national treasury? Empty can run mice. I just ascended the throne, who is truly loyal. Who is the real traitor? Who else can he believe besides the old eunuch Wang Chengyan who accompanied him to hang himself in the coal mine? British Duke Zhang Weixian can believe that from the first Duke of England to the last Duke of England, he died in battle for the old Zhu family. Where is Zhu Chunqin, Duke of Qinghua? This old thing has surrendered to thieves. Do you think there are any other stains on it? It seems quite disgusting too. Also, at that time, the commander of the royal guards, Luo Yangxing, was a dog who received national favor but mingled with a group of people from the Donglin party. Later, he also surrendered to Jinnu. Can you believe it? So in this comparison, eunuchs like Wei Zhongxian and Wang Chengyan, as well as some of their noble relatives, are more trustworthy. As for the forums in later generations, including the current Ming dynasty, there are rumors that Wei Zhongxian wanted to kill Chongzhen. Wei Zhongxian, together with the Hakka clan, killed Empress Zhang of the Heavenly Qi Emperor, causing multiple miscarriages, resulting in the absence of a crown prince. In the end, only the throne could be passed on to Chongzhen and other rumors. It's actually not possible to think with your brain. After all, no matter how foolish Wei Zhongxian and the Hakka clan were, they would have clearly controlled an inexperienced emperor, which was easier than controlling the loyal Prince Xian who had always had a bad impression of them. The Chongzhen emperor who later killed them, right? How did eunuchs gain their power? Still relying on the emperor's favor and trust. Lu Jin, who was appointed as the eunuch in charge of the Ministry of Rights, was the leader of the Eight Tigers. He was known as the Emperor of Rights and Emperor Wuzong as the Sitting Emperor. However, after robbing his family, there were millions of tales of gold and silver. It was simply a shame for the eunuchs. How did the Grand Emperor Lu Jin die? A piece of paper went down and cut more than $3,000. The eunuch who was planning to rebel was not prepared for his troops and instead was captured without a fight. Wei Zhongxian, a grand young man of 9,000 years, hanged himself while being sent to Fengyang. So the eunuchs of the Ming dynasty were truly impressive, but this impressive performance came from the emperor's trust rather than their own. That is to say, when Chongzhen's accession to the throne became a foregone conclusion, Wei Zhongxian would definitely find a way to please Chongzhen as soon as possible instead of plotting to harm him. That would be a great death. As for the later records in Ming history, they were edited by Mi Qing and revised by the disciples and grandchildren of the Donglin party. Their credibility is estimated to be just that, at best better than nothing. If you don't pour more dirty water on Daiming's body, how can you still be so angry? How can we still enter the Qing dynasty? How can we continue the prosperous era of husky money? How can you keep cutting land and paying compensation? The key is, without proving that the downfall of the Ming dynasty was just a matter of time, how can we whitewash the act of betraying the country and surrendering by the Donglin literati as a good minister and choosing a ruler to serve? As for now, the wise and powerful Emperor Chongzhen couldn't find his golden finger, and he had no choice but to use a novel he had read in a previous life as a magic weapon. At least he knew that eunuchs were far more reliable than the Donglin party, so first of all, he couldn't take out old way. 
As for the rest, such as the Royal Guards and the East and West factories, he didn't intend to let go of them. He used everything he could. The ministers were disobedient, even if they were killed, they could be replaced. There were not many others in the Ming dynasty who sharpened their heads and wanted to become officials. Even with the same intensity of killing officials as Zhu Baba and Zhu Laozi, there were still people taking office. It is probably not a problem for Emperor Chongzhen to kill a few. The urgent task now is to first let the old man Wang Qingyan work with the eastern cult leader to clean up the inner factory, so as not to die inexplicably like several emperors before him. Secondly, it is necessary to find a few reliable dragon legs and build an army that can be completely loyal to oneself, with the kind that makes them die without blinking an eye. After all, great people have said that political power comes from the barrel of a gun, and having a gun is the king of grass. Emperor Chongzhen, who was in a bad mood, continued to mutter, Director, I seem to have taken the wrong script. Can I change it to another one? End of this chapter Chapter 4 Buying a Wave of Hearts First You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Buying a Wave of Hearts First Overnight, Emperor Chongzhen's youth turned pale with sorrow, but unfortunately, the sun still rose the next day. After thinking all night, Emperor Chongzhen finally decided to sort out the importance and urgency. To solve the problems of courier Li Xiaoga and Jinnu, the first step is to have a reliable army, where political power emerges from the barrel of the gun. To have a reliable army, one must first have people's hearts and money. The silver matter may seem urgent for a while, but there's no need to worry too much. Isn't Wei Zhongxian here to take the blame and hold the silver? As for the human heart, to put it simply, according to the textbook, I want to be the emperor, that Emperor Chongzhen learned at the Traverse Training Base before his travels, it is the basic plan. What is the basic plan of the emperor? Eunuchs are impossible. Eunuchs are just domestic slaves, carrying black pots and carrying silver is not a problem. Using them as basic plates is bullshit, and the Emperor Tianqi fell for it. It is also impossible for the relatives of Sun Gui. His Majesty Yang Er, through his own experience of being taken away by his cousin, tells us that nobility cannot be relied on unless the sows climb trees. A civil minister. Originally, in normal history, Emperor Chongzhen used the old crooked necked tree from Maishan to prove that civil officials and ministers were more cunning than nobles when they fucked their eggs. Only the people are left. The problem is that the people of the Ming dynasty also had to be divided into various types. Scholars, peasants, workers, merchants, and soldiers. And besides the scholars, the rest belong to the kind passed down from generation to generation, which means that the sons and grandsons of craftsmen will all be craftsmen, and the sons and grandsons of soldiers will also be soldiers, and so will merchants. And there is also a distinction between ethnic groups. Although by the time of Emperor Chongzhen, there was basically no difference. Thanks to the ban on self-marriage among various ethnic groups set by Zhu Yuanzhang, most of the ethnic groups had become Han Chinese. There is only one that is excluded from this ban. In short, having a basic plan is also a daunting task. But farmers will always be the largest base, and this is definitely not a problem. That is to say, Emperor Chongzhen wanted to create a basic plan for himself, and the most reliable and important thing was to win over the farmers, while also taking down disobedient ministers and the eight major locust merchants. Only in this way can we successfully renew Daiming's life. As for how long it can last, it depends on fate. On the second day, when he went to court and arrived at the main hall, the voice of the courtiers shouting, Long live, fell. Wang Qingyan then shouted at the side, If you have a morning report, please leave the court. Seeing that no one among the courtiers complained of disgust towards him, Emperor Chongzhen said to Wang Qingyan beside him, Wang Qingyan, announce an edict. Wang Qingyan bowed and said, Yes. He glanced down at the courtiers and immediately opened the imperial edict, reciting. Feng Tian Qingyan Emperor issued an edict stating. I will pass on the legacy of my ancestors and inherit the great cause. 
Only the ancestors' achievements and virtues will be obeyed by laws and regulations, the governance of officials and the people will be difficult, and it will be easy to adapt. I am young and do not understand the ingenuity of ancient wise kings in governing the world. However, I have heard of it. The ancient sage kings ruled the world, and the people did not add taxes, while the sea was abundant and abundant. Although I am not sensitive, I still aspire to it. The order is that all the officials and officials in the world will have officials, and from now on, there will be a Ming dynasty, never adding taxes. As soon as Wang Chingyan's voice fell, all the righteous gentlemen in the court were stunned. Never add taxes. Benevolent governance. Three emperors and five emperors, who has mentioned it? Spring and autumn and warring states, who has shouted it again? This is the true benevolent ruler. The Donglin masters in the court believe that this is the benevolent ruler in their hearts. If they never collect taxes, it would be even more perfect. Not in vain for the teachings of Emperor Chongzhen over the years. It has to be said that Kong Matsi's skill is still very intimidating, including countless later ones, but it is believed that this is Kong Matsi's benevolent policy. However, this is simply a bullshit pseudo-proposition. Because in China, taxes and levies are always separate. Tax is used for national defense expenses, government office expenses, and various local affairs and channel excavation and repair. And Fu was used to build a palace and temple for the emperor, to eat, drink, and have fun. To put it simply, taxes go into the national treasury, while taxes are the emperor's internal funds. These things do not go through the national treasury, but are spent by the emperor himself. From a practical perspective, the issuance of such an edict by Emperor Chongzhen had almost no impact on the operation of ministers and local government offices. This is also the confidence of future generations to shout for never adding taxes. Otherwise, do you want him to shout, never raise taxes, and give it a try? Let's see if those wealthy G merchants and landlords will rise up and tear apart those one million or so eight banner soldiers. Now, regardless of whether it is the Donglin party or the eunuch party, or any other chaotic Chu or Zhejiang party, it must be acknowledged that the Chongjin doctrine is an absolute benevolent governance. Anyway, what does it matter to us if the emperor has less money? The whole world belongs to you, you can spend less and spend less. So all the courtiers in the entire hall, led by their leader Huang Liji, descended from the mountain and shouted, your majesty is benevolent and has greatly benefited the people. Please issue an edict to announce to the world, so that the world can understand your majesty's benevolent and loving intentions towards the people. After giving a sneer in his heart, Chongzhen looked at the courtiers below and continued, this edict is to be issued to the world. He ordered the Jin Wei and the East Factory to send people to read it out to the people, so that they would be aware of this matter and prevent any petty officials from harming the people below. If anyone intervenes in it, the people can bring a grand edict to the capital to report, and the Jin Wei and the East Factory will send people to guard it. There must be no mistakes. After playing such a trick, Emperor Chongzhen can finally breathe a sigh of relief in his heart. After all, with this edict as the foundation, those small self-farmers and small and medium dot-sized landlords will treat him as their own father. Not right. He is even closer than his own father. As for the lower class of the people, they may wish to erect a shrine for him and worship day and night. At the same time, there will be fewer disgusting things to offer, right? With the hearts of the people at hand, even if the righteous gentlemen in the court rebelled collectively, I believe that as long as Emperor Chongzhen can leave the palace and come to the streets, there will be grateful people who will immediately send him to the throne. In this move, Chongzhen followed the hooligans of the old Lu family from the Han dynasty and Lu Dishue, who had traveled through the past to become emperor. Emperor Wen of Han was always willing to waive various land taxes, and the old rascal Lu Bang was even more adept at playing this game. Not only did he occasionally waive taxes, but he also gave rewards from time to time, telling everyone that mixing labor and capital is beneficial. In this way, they have their own basic plan. Now that Chongjin has also played such a trick, 
I'm afraid that all the people of the Ming dynasty will become the foundation of Chongzhen. With such a strong backing, Chongzhen said that those who are against me are scum as for not having much money in hand now, Chongzhen said that the heavenly Qi emperor of Dexing still has some financial resources, and not only that, but he will also have a wave after he steals some of the ministers in a period of time. It is estimated that getting a few million tails will not be a problem. Also, the later urban management Yaman was a good unit, and the Ming dynasty should also learn from it. There were many surplus soldiers under the Jin Wei and East Factory. The so dot called military surplus is basically equivalent to temporary workers and hooligans. It is simply a waste not to use these people to turn them into urban management yamen. Then, go collect protection fees from me on the streets. Especially in brothels and restaurants, they must be collected greatly. As for what kind of backstage do these people have? I have the Jin Way and the East Factory in my hands, but why bother with these scumbags? Whoever dares to jump out, let the Royal Guards and the East Factory investigate who. Ensure that every check is accurate. After checking, we can copy the house. Isn't this money coming? Even if it's not enough, aren't there still eight locust merchants? These few families are very wealthy. If there are not enough Jin merchants, then add Zhejiang merchants, Huizhou merchants, Fujian merchants, Lu merchants, and Beijing merchants. Is this always possible? What is a wealthy businessman? Luxury merchants have no country, and even these guys who can hang them will sell ropes. What are they afraid to do for profit? So aren't these wealthy merchants just pigs raised by the state? Are you waiting for them to sell daming together with the eight great locust merchants? Chongjin was very happy about causing trouble, but when the ministers below heard about it, they couldn't be happy anymore. Why don't you cut off the harmful things of the royal guards and the east factory? Is it harmful to keep causing trouble? However, although the ministers in the court were dissatisfied, no one jumped out to say anything. After all, Wei Zhongxian has not yet collapsed, and the court is full of old fogies waiting for someone to come forward. But look at me, look at you, no one is foolish, surprisingly no one jumps out to oppose. The courtiers are not very comfortable in their hearts. It's only been a day since they ascended the throne, your majesty. Why are you like a different person? What about the Prince Exian who had immense trust in us righteous gentlemen and immense hatred towards Wei Zhongxian's eunuchs when he was hiding in the mansion? How could you change as soon as you ascended the throne? After all, everything was fine before ascending to the throne yesterday. Now you don't plan to lay off the factory guards, do you? Ignoring the feelings of the courtiers below, Emperor Chongzhen was so pleased that he didn't want to. For Emperor Chongzhen, the factory guard was just an extra pair of eyes and a knife in his hand, and none of them could be easily discarded. In history, the original Chongzhen was deceived by the righteous gentlemen of the Donglin party to abolish the East Factory and the Genie Guard, and the consequences are well dot known. At the time of the Jia Shen national disaster, only one eunuch Wang Qingyan accompanied him. Those who died in battle for Chongzhen were all eunuchs, and only a few scholars died in the national disaster. Except for a limited number of ministers and Sun Gui who saw no way out to follow and die, most of them even allowed Emperor Chongzhen to break the Jingyang bell and not a single one entered the palace. Now that we have our own basic plan, let's strengthen our eyes and sharpen our knives. The rest is to take care of the army. End of this chapter Chapter 5 How to Get Out and Don't Collect Protection Fees You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 How to Get Out and Don't Collect Protection Fees The original intention of Chongzhen was to become a wise ruler who loved the people like a son, but to become a wise ruler, several prerequisite conditions must be met first. What are the prerequisites? There is an old saying in the Central Plains that goes, a man cannot be without money for a day, let alone without power. In many cases, having power is more important than having money. The power here not only refers to the power above the court, but also includes military power, 
and also includes the financial power that countless men in later generations lack the most. In order to achieve the goal of seizing all power, all means are not important, so Chongzhen did not mind becoming a big tyrant first. Just like some energetic groups in Hong Kong in the future, when the boss is almost penniless, do you still expect a younger brother to hang out with you? Isn't coming out here just a way to return home in glory and honor our ancestors? To achieve these two things, ultimately, don't we still have to have power and money? The biggest advantage of Emperor Zhu, who has traveled through time now, is his power. Although he has been dispersed among the big shots in the court, Emperor Chongzhen has firmly grasped the righteousness. As long as his heart is tough enough, it is not particularly difficult to regain his power. The only problem is still the money. So, Emperor Chongzhen now really wants to make money. In order to pretend to be a good bully and also make a big basic plate for himself, Emperor Chongzhen directly blew out the bull bully that never added taxes. As the emperor, teeth must be able to be used as gold and cannot be retracted, so there is basically no hope for this folk tax. Even if he hoped, in reality, the common people of the late Ming dynasty were so poor that they couldn't afford to take in a few big sons. If they could survive, who would be willing to take the risk of losing their heads and rebel? So, after thinking about the practices of some energetic groups in later generations, Emperor Chongzhen decided to learn from them. He first transferred the Jin Yi Wei to establish a city management office and assigned it to the East Factory. Then, he began to charge protection fees, booth fees, urban public health management fees, and so on to all merchants in the capital. In short, he looked at money and saw the benefits. When the Emperor Chongzhen thought about it, the Royal Guards and the East Hall Fanzi were used as city guards. It was estimated that they could stop the children crying at night, which was awesome than the city guards of the later dynasties although he was a newcomer and was not familiar with the people of the Jinyui and Dongsichang, Emperor Chongzhen learned a good theory in later generations. To leave professional matters to professional people. Simply let Dong Chang and Jinyui do this. Anyway, in any film or TV series, Chang Wei has never been a good person. His reputation is already bad, as the saying goes, more lice don't itch, more debts don't worry, and no matter how bad it is, it's just that. Chao Hua Chun, Wei Zhongxian, and Su Xian Chun all had a bewildered expression on their faces. Who knows what Emperor Chongzhen had in mind when he called the three of them over at night. Tsuji tapped on the table in front of him, and Emperor Chongzhen said, Zhong Xian, how much of Mao Wenlong's salary has not been paid? How much of the salary owed by the border soldiers? Wei Zhongxian said cautiously, if I were to return to the emperor, the border army doesn't owe much salary. It was reissued once in the sixth year of the Tianxi era, and I still owe about three years of salary. As for Mao Wenlong's side, because he opened the town of Dongjiang, the late emperor had already allowed him to raise his own military funds Emperor Chongzhen immediately exclaimed, self-financing is not a big problem. The problem is that you command the Dongjiang army at this time with the quality level of future rabbits. The Sodat called self-raised military pay is nothing more than the fact that the Ming court's treasury cannot produce much silver, and if they want to make a white note, they are afraid that others will not recognize it. Therefore, they have come to allow self-raised military pay. Next to it is North Korea, and the location of Dongjiang town is also good. Various smuggling and trade activities can make a lot of money. One of the reasons why Mao Wenlong became cold later was this. Emperor Chongzhen certainly could not sit idly by and watch Dongjiang town continue to be so chaotic. After crossing over, there are actually only so many military powers that I have the most hope of directly grasping. The Beijing camp in the hands of British Duke Zhang Weixian, the White Staff soldiers in the hands of Ming Dynasty loyalist Qin Liangyu, and the Dongjiang army under the jurisdiction of smuggler Mao Wenlong. As for the other armies, it is not very realistic for a newly crowned emperor to have much say in the army, as he wants to completely control them for a while he casually threw several memorials on the table onto the ground, and Emperor Chongzhen sneered, so, there are so many memorials impeaching Mao Wenlong now. I don't know what Duke Wei thinks. 
Being able to blend into the famous 9,000-year-old in history proves that Wei Zhongxian's brain is absolutely sufficient. Almost at the same time as the memorial landed, Wei Zhongxian knelt directly to the ground and said, Your Majesty, damn the old servant. I will definitely raise the military pay of General Mao's troops as soon as possible. Wei Zhongxian did not mention how much silver was in the internal funds, nor did he shout that there was no silver in the national treasury. Instead, he directly took responsibility and expressed his intention to share the burden on Emperor Chongzhen. Wei Zhongxian is such a chicken thief. Emperor Chongzhen did not mention how Mao Wenlong was doing, nor did he mention the impeachment of Mao Wenlong. Instead, he only raised it after asking about military pay. What does this mean? This means that Emperor Chongzhen had no intention of punishing Mao Wenlong at all, and instead had some intention of seeking revenge. Wei Zhongxian also understood what Mao Wenlong meant to the Ming dynasty and what his existence meant to the establishment of slaves. As for Wei Zhongxian's intelligence, it was originally anticipated by Emperor Chongzhen that he immediately instructed Su Xianchan, turn around and allocate more than 500 troops to Chao Huachan, and then draw some personnel from the East Factory to form the city management office. Chao Huachan, who had never heard of the term urban management yamen, and had no knowledge of the power of urban management, even felt a little confused and said, Your Highness, what is this urban management yamen mainly for? Emperor Chongzhen, who secretly sneered in his heart, immediately gave advice to Chao Huachan. There is a shop in the capital that counts as one. First, find a way to understand their income situation and give me a monthly protection fee of 1.5%, which is called booth fee, urban health management fee, and public security guarantee fee. Half of it will be left to the urban management office, and the other half will be handed over to my internal treasury. Don't worry about whose business it is, what kind of duke's estate it belongs to. When it's time to collect it, don't be soft-hearted. If you collect less, I won't spare you, merchants are counted one by one, especially those from foreign countries. Han Chinese people charge a profit of 1.5%. If it's from foreign countries or non-Han Chinese merchants, one is counted one and all are collected at 2.5%. Half of the profit is left for the city management office, and the rest is taken into internal funds. Chao Huachun was also confused. Didn't this emperor actually believe in the Donglin party system? How come this doesn't seem like a human being compared to Wei Zhongxian's actions? After a moment of inner turmoil, Chao Huachun still gritted his head and asked, Emperor, if it were from the father dot in dot law's family. You control whose family you belong to. If you don't pay the silver, you'll smash it for me. Make sure he pays honestly. Whether it's the father dot in dot law or the duke, I don't care about these things. As long as I see the silver and can't collect it, I'll take your dog head first. When it comes to silver, Emperor Chongzhen immediately becomes murderous, especially when he hears about the national father dot in dot law, he is even more infuriated. The reason why Emperor Chongzhen did not let go of his father dot in dot law was not because of setting an example or treating him equally, but because he himself had a great opinion of his father dot in dot law. After all, Emperor Chongzhen, who had once believed in the evil ways of the Donglin party in history, was about to end his game. He wanted to borrow some money from his father dot in dot law as an emergency measure. At least he could transfer Guan Ning's army to the capital and serve as the new emperor for the Ming dynasty. As a result, Chongzhen's father dot in dot law cried poverty and finally took out 13,000 taels like a beggar, meaning to send Chongzhen away. How much did the army later break into Beijing and extract from this Zhou Guizhang? A whopping 530,000 taels of silver. Other rare treasures were even more expensive, and dozens of carts were pulled, all cheaper than Li Zicheng, the emperor of the 18 days. How do you think it's all because the father dot in dot law of Zhou was not benevolent first? Since that's the case, how could Emperor Chongzhen not look at his father? In dot law differently. You have to scrape a layer of skin off the old thing. You listen to me well, what I want is half of their profit. You are not allowed to overcharge, but you cannot overcharge. 
even if you have one more or less eldest son, it is not acceptable. If you encounter someone who doesn't pay, go beat, smash, and make trouble for me every day, making their business impossible. As for those who have paid, no one is allowed to harass them anymore. If Chingpi causes trouble, even if they break their dog legs and throw them to the imperial estate as laborers. At the beginning of each month, give me some silver and send it to my internal funds Chao Huachun was even more worried. Your Majesty, if you do this, I'm afraid that the ministers in the court will impeach Your Majesty for competing with the people for benefits. Upon hearing Chao Huachun's words, Emperor Chongjin became angry at the time and said, Bastard! You old man, have you been hanging out with those people from the Donglin party for a long time and left your mind numb? Striving for benefits with the people. Which people are competing for benefits with? I just announced today that I will never increase taxes, why did I compete with the people for benefits? Competing for profits with those merchants. Are merchants still considered common people? Didn't the court officials say they should prioritize agriculture over commerce? Never adding taxes is the best way to focus on agriculture. Similarly, collecting protection fees from these lawless merchants is also the best form of light commerce. Those who have a support do not pay taxes, while those who do not have a support will be stripped of their green skin. In the future, the merchants in this capital will be stripped by me, which is much happier than being stripped of their green skin. Remember, you are my servant, not a servant of the Donglin party. Also, if someone impeaches me, let the East Factory and the Royal Guards join forces to investigate. Look at how much salary a minister who claims to prioritize agriculture is actually valuing commerce, how many members there are in those taverns and brothels, and how much money they have at home. If he comes from corruption, first give him to me to copy the house, and then peel off the skin, it's real grass. Aren't they fond of ancestral traditions? Let's use the ancestral traditions of Emperor Hongwu to fulfill them. When will the Ming still lack people who want to become officials in the eyes of Emperor Chongzhen, these officials of the Ming dynasty were completely spoiled. They were able to kill the commander of the royal guards in the court when they were the most powerful. After Chao Huachun stepped down, Emperor Chongzhen began to command Wei Zhongxian. Redispatch tax inspectors and bring up the mining tax revenue for me. Anyone who opposes it will go investigate. There is also salt tax, and we need to investigate those illegal salt merchants. We need to conduct a thorough investigation. Let the people below pay attention and keep a close eye on the salt tax for me. Who dares to sell illegal salt or evade taxes? Those who deserve to be killed, those who deserve to be stolen, and those who deserve to be stolen must not be killed or let go. If the people sell their own food and turn a blind eye, it will be convenient for the people and cause trouble for those local tyrants and evil gentry. However, no matter what kind of tax it is, if you dare to receive mud legs, you can also cut yourself. After a burst of anger, Chongjin remembered something and said to Wei Zhongxian, hurry up tomorrow and give your 9.000 year old nickname. These bastards are trying to mock and kill you, can't you see? Also, have someone demolish all your ancestral halls and exchange them for silver coins, so there's no need to send them into the internal funds. You can take this silver coin and recruit people to rebuild the West Factory for me. Do you understand, the way of heaven is to make up for what is lacking. The way of man is to make up for what is lacking. What I do is the way of heaven. After driving away Chao Huachun, Emperor Chongjin of Wei Zhongxian and Su Xianchun began to mutter, I really love the people like a son. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Chongjin Weifu Private Visit Record You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Chongjin Weifu Private Visit Record After staying in the palace honestly for a few days, Emperor Chongjin, who had a headache handling official affairs, finally couldn't stay. Even if I am an IT dead man, why are you always bothering me with these trivial matters that have nothing serious to do? Do you want me to be exhausted earlier? If I have to handle everything, what's the use of me in the cabinet and the six ministries? Emperor Chongjin, 
who couldn't stay, decided to leave the palace and learn from Kong Matsi, who would only dress up and visit privately if he had nothing to do. He didn't expect anything to happen, but at least he would go out and relax, wouldn't he? Take a look at Kong Matsi, who doesn't do the main business in the court every day and only visits him privately in his humble attire. Of course, Ma Ji's micro-clothing private visit was actually aimed at playing with beautiful women from the beginning. Do you remember Xia Yuha by the Daming Lake? That person who has been waiting and studying for a lifetime, and on the brink of death, still wants his daughter to recognize his father even a person like Kong Matsi can blend into an eternal emperor. Emperor Chongzhen asked himself, no matter how poor he was, how could he possibly be? Emperor Chongzhen decided not only to be diligent in political affairs, but also to be diligent in conducting private visits in humble clothing, spreading his own legends among the people. Like the thugs of the strong Lu family, he should conduct private visits in humble clothing to reveal his basic knowledge and reputation. As for picking up girls like Kong Matsi, let's forget about it. The beauty of the imperial harem of the Ming dynasty is not comparable in quality to those horse faces of Miqing however, this can also understand why Kong Matsi likes to go out of the palace to pick up girls. Basically, a woman outside the palace is more beautiful than his harem however, to put it another way, in history, Matsi Gu was definitely not the top performer who enjoyed going out to the palace to play. When it comes to playing, the Lu family of the former Han dynasty, from the emperor to the crown prince, all like this tune. Look at Emperor Jing of Han, this guy who was named Ming Jun. Later, there was a big-eared guy who couldn't help but say that the Emperor Xiao Jing, who was the great-grandson of Emperor Xiao Jing, had smashed the crown prince of Wu to death with a chessboard on the streets of Chang'an, causing the king of Wu to not face Chang'an at all. Chang'an still had to lose face to the king of Wu. If it weren't for the rebellion of the King of Wu later on, Chang'an would have had to recognize him by pinching his nose no matter how he jumped. After all, the crown prince of the King of Wu was killed by the then crown prince and later Emperor Xiao Jing on a chessboard Emperor Chongzhen's desire for a private visit in his humble attire was naturally incredibly simple, just like the princes of the old Lu family who would usually claim to be the young masters of a certain lord or marquis family when traveling. Emperor Chongzhen simply arranged for himself to be his brother. In law, the second young master of the Zhou Guizhong family. After dressing up in disguise, Emperor Chongzhen, who was almost indistinguishable from the official Tuesday prince, sneaked out of the palace with a group of horses to avoid the cabinet. Walking aimlessly on the street, Chongzhen saw a side that he had never seen in the memorial. A vendor bargaining with a customer for a copper plate, and the customer left with hope for the next customer. A girl from a brothel leaned against the railing, waving a handkerchief and shouting to him, Grandpa, come on. The sound was so chilling that it made one's bones go from the inside out, I also saw the shopkeeper of the restaurant driving away the beggars, and saw that the people on the street were mostly looking hungry. I also saw that their clothes were almost all sewn and patched before being worn again. What really interested Emperor Chongzhen was a group of fans from the East Factory walking down the street with a group of military surplus soldiers. They went straight into a restaurant, came out with a cloth bag, and hung a sign at the entrance of the shop with the words, Ju Yu, written on it. The travelers who have fully received the authentic memory of Emperor Chongzhen know that the so dot called Chrysanthemum Moon means September, and according to the information reported by Chao Huachan, Hanging the brand means that the protection fee for this store in September has already been paid. As for anyone daring to forge, it's unlikely that the reputation of the Royal Guards and the East Factory is so prominent that they can almost stop children from crying at night. How could anyone dare to take the risk of losing their head and counterfeit the brand issued by the factory guard? After the Dongchang fanzi and the remaining soldiers left, Emperor Chongzhen directly entered the branded restaurant and shouted, Shop owner, bring two specialty dishes and heat a pot of wine. The waiter in the running shop was quite discerning. Seeing Chongzhen dressed up and Wang Qingyan and Fang Zhenghua following him, he knew that Chongzhen had an extraordinary identity. He first notified the shopkeeper, and then ran to the back hall to order the kitchen to cook and scald wine. When Chongzhen saw the waiter notifying the shopkeeper, he didn't hesitate and said to the shopkeeper, shopkeeper, 
come over now. The shopkeeper quickly ran over and asked, this young master has a keen eye. Do you have any instructions for calling the young master? Expecting the shopkeeper to look down on others, and then pretending to be slapped in the face, it seems like there's no point in playing with it. Emperor Chongjin simply asked, Shopkeeper, I saw that a Dongchang fan had just left your store and hung a sign at your doorstep. Why is this? The shopkeeper was also honest and answered directly, If you're talking to me, what management fees did the gentleman from the East Factory come to the small shop to collect just now? Whenever the small shop honestly pays, they will hang a sign like this at the door. Chongjin saw that the shopkeeper was not clear enough, so he directly asked, How much silver did they accept from you? What did they accept this silver for? It seems that you are not the only one accepting it. Are you also willing to pay it? The shopkeeper saw that Chongjin didn't take the East Factory seriously inside and outside of his words, and was a bit uncertain about Chongjin's whereabouts, hesitating and hesitant to speak. Wang Chengyan saw the situation and shouted, My young master asks a question, just answer honestly. My young master is the second young master of the Zhou state father. In law's family, and even the East Factory governor Chao Huachan has personally arrived. When you see our young master, you must also shout uncle of the state. The shopkeeper sneered inwardly and said, I have seen Uncle Guo before. If Uncle returns to China, the people of the Royal Guards and the East Factory will charge half a layer of profit from the small shop. I heard that foreigners and foreigners will charge two and a half layers. When it comes to receiving this money, they only say what kind of management fee it is. The little one has little knowledge and is not sure what kind of regulations this management fee is. However, according to them, if Chingpi causes trouble or eats and drinks for free in the store, just go find them and they will solve it. A small shop is small, so there's no way not to pay. If they don't pay, they will come and make trouble every day, and this business cannot be done. Having paid this money is also a way to buy peace. I heard from other people in the store that they didn't accept the money for nothing. If someone causes trouble and comes to find them, it's really towards the younger ones. If that's the case, I'm willing to pay this silver money, and it's all just a matter of paying commercial tax Emperor Chongjin, who cursed at his lowly offspring, continued to ask, so they only took in small shops like yours. Do they dare to take in those shops that have connections with the adults in the court? The shopkeeper's note said, Uncle who returned to China, this East Factory is a servant of the Emperor's family. They collect money. If they don't have the same background as Uncle Guo or are related to the current chief minister, who would dare not pay? After listening to the shopkeeper's words, Chongjin turned to ask Wang Chengyan, I remember our family also had a shop near here. Have you heard about the protection fee? Wang Chengyan's heart immediately felt bad all over. My long live master, how do I know if there is a shop near my uncle's house? You need to ask the fan of the East Factory about this matter. Besides, isn't this protection fee collected by the East Factory by your elderly family? But you are the emperor. If you say there is, then there must be. If there is no, there must be. Wang Chengyan immediately replied, Young Master Hui, it's around here. Why don't we go over and take a look later? Chongjin immediately said to Wang Chengyan, now that you understand the account, let's go and take a look. After understanding the account, Chongjin began to shake and walk into the street. I want to go see how the Genie Wei and the East Factory collect money. Is there any inconspicuous thing that dares not pay? End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Kill the Chicken as a Warning to the Monkey You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Kill the chicken as a warning to the monkey. Emperor Chongjin continued to walk along the street with Wang Chengyan and Dong Fang Bubi, swaying three times. He happened to see a group of Dong Chang fans leading a group of military surplus soldiers surrounding a ticket shop, with a circle of people from the Jin Yi Way around. The leader of the East Factory grabbed the clothes of the ticket seller and said, You really don't plan to pay this money, do you? 
I advise you not to make a mistake. The shopkeeper may be apologizing, but the meaning behind the words also reveals your attitude of trying to persuade me. Juni, Juni, it's not that the small one doesn't refuse to pay, it's just that there are members of the current Prime Minister Huang in the small ticket office. If the small one pays now, they won't be able to account for it. If the Prime Minister asks, the small one won't be able to explain it. Between the two of them, there was already a circle of onlookers surrounding them, all discussing and discussing. Oh, this ticket shop is tough enough. How dare you not give face to the Royal Guards and the East Factory? One person looked at the excitement and said with a sarcastic tone, Real men, I just don't know if you can still be so tough in the prison of the East Factory. The person next to him rolled their eyes and said, What do you know? Didn't you hear what the shopkeeper said just now? There are members of the current head of the imperial court, Huang Xiangye, in this ticket shop. No matter how domineering the Jin Yi Wei and the East Factory are, wouldn't the current head of the imperial court dare not give face to them? After all, this Huang Gu is always a person of 9,000 years old, and I heard that the emperor has been displeased with the eunuchs and the Jin Yi Wei for a long time. How could they allow them to act so recklessly? If they really provoke the head of the imperial court, and a memorial is handed over to the emperor, the East Factory is not afraid that the current emperor will punish them harshly. Emperor Chongjin, who was not far away, listened to the conversations of these people word for word in his ears and couldn't help but frown. He had already beaten Wei Zhongxian, but this eunuch party was still so arrogant and didn't know how to restrain himself. Emperor Chongjin, who was already feeling unhappy, whispered to Wang Chengyan, go and see what's going on. Wang Chengyan understood and squeezed into the crowd to find the Jinyui colonel. After showing his waist tag, he stopped the Jinyui colonel who was about to salute and asked, what's going on inside? After Wang Chengyan showed his waist tag, the young school recognized the identity of his father. In law Wang Chengyan and immediately dared not conceal it. If I were to return to my father. In law, the ticket numbers inside were owned by Huang Liji, the head of the court, Huang Xiangye, and several wealthy merchants from Shangxi Fan and Wang families. Today, the East Factory came to collect management fees, but it was shameful. The shopkeeper of this ticket shop has now moved out of Huang Xiangye. Not only does he not pay, but he also threatens the East Factory and the people of the small ones, saying that he wants to report it to His Majesty making it difficult for the small ones to leave although Huang Liji is a member of the eunuch party, and the Jin Yi Wei is also associated with the eunuch party, no matter how we calculate, the Jin Yi Wei is still closer to the East Factory, especially today when he was pulled to the platform by the East Factory, but was humiliated by someone. The Jin Yi Wei Xiao Xiao naturally doesn't mind giving Huang Xianye semi-drops. Wang Chengyan also felt tricky when he heard the little school say this. After asking the little school to go back, he returned to report to Emperor Chongzhen. Emperor Chongzhen was delighted when he heard this. What is this ticket number? In later generations, that would be a bank, and the ticket number thing is even darker than a bank. At least the bank still has interest, and the ticket number not only does not pay interest, but if someone deposits money in the ticket number, they also have to pay a deposit fee to the ticket number. As for the fact that Shofu Huang Liji has members inside, it doesn't matter. Whoever owns their shop dares to block me from collecting money. As for Huang Liji, he belongs to the eunuch gang. Forget it, kill him first. And it also involves the Fan family in Shangxi. Isn't that one of the eight locust merchants? Coincidentally, let's start with this old thing and give them a look for snakes. Emperor Chongzhen immediately ordered in a low voice, go in again and tell them to show the prestige of the genie guard and the east factory. Even if you smash this Yongchang ticket shop, I will be there for everything. Tell them that in the future, no matter whose family's business it is, even the father. In laws family of the current dynasty will be smashed by me. Then, all the ticket houses in the capital will be smashed and sealed, and everyone will be taken back to the imperial prison, but no punishment will be allowed. They will be locked up for now after Wang Chengyan received his orders, 
he squeezed back again and looked for the captain led by the genie guard and the leader of the East Factory. After showing his waist tag, he said, Your Majesty has said that no matter which family has members inside, no matter who is involved, they must first smash the ticket number, then seal it and take everyone back to the Imperial Prison for custody, but no punishment is allowed. All ticket numbers in the capital are handled according to this. Regardless of whether it was the captain of the genie guard or the leader of the East Factory, who didn't know that Wang Chengen was a popular figure around Emperor Chongzhen. Since Wang Chengen appeared here, Emperor Chongzhen was likely nearby, and the two immediately made up their minds to perform well. Originally worried that the emperor might have ideas about the factory guards, they completely abandoned them. After bowing to Wang Chengen, the head of the East Factory and the colonel of the genie guard loudly called out to the fan, saying, The governor of the East Factory, Duke Chao, has ordered that this ticket shop be smashed and sealed, and everyone in the ticket shop be sent to the genie guard imperial prison. Upon hearing these words, the fans and Jun Yi were greatly inspired. He meowed and said to you, No, it's not possible, is it? If I don't teach you a lesson, you don't even know how powerful our royal guards and East Factory are. All the fans, soldiers, and numerous officers of the Jin Yi Wei shouted out in unison, and immediately rushed towards the ticket office to start smashing. After smashing things, they also pasted seals on doors, windows, and other places. The inconspicuous ticket office clerk wanted to rush over and stop them, but also knocked them down to the ground. He put an iron chain around his neck and was about to be taken back to the imperial prison. The shopkeeper was completely dumbfounded when he saw this. He didn't expect to move out of the title of Lord Shofu, which was not only useless, but also smashed the ticket number by the joint efforts of the Royal Guards and the East Factory. Just as the shopkeeper was in a daze, an iron chain had already been placed around his neck. A mocking voice from the nearby Royal Guards came over. Please, the Imperial Prison has already prepared a room for the shopkeeper, but I don't know when your chief assistant will be able to catch you out. After speaking, the young school of the Genie Wei turned cold again and cursed at the shopkeeper, what kind of person are you really? You dare to stop the joint operation of the Jin Yi Wei and the East Factory. What a big coward! The shopkeeper and the onlookers seem to have just remembered the notorious names of the Royal Guards and the East Factory. It was rumored that those who were imprisoned would hardly be able to escape alive. Although it is rumored that the current emperor is quite disdainful of the Royal Guards and the East Factory and wants to carry out rectification, that is only a rumor, and it has not yet been rectified. Although the head of the East Factory, Chao Huachan, has never had a bad reputation and it is said that he is quite close to the gentlemen of the Donglin party, that is only a rumor. Who dares to treat the East Factory as a good school? It is really like the longevity star eating arsenic and living a life of boredom. Thinking of this, the onlookers around immediately dispersed in twos and threes, secretly hating themselves for wanting to watch something lively. If they were caught by the Jin Yi Wei and the East Factory, then there would still be a good chance. The more I thought about it, the more scared I became. The speed at which everyone dispersed also became faster. In the end, I simply hated my parents for giving me two less legs. Upon seeing this, Emperor Chongzhen felt as if he had eaten an popsicle during the dog days. He secretly said, This is the factory guard in my heart. With the factory guard in hand, I would like to see which inconspicuous person dares to deceive me. What's wrong with dictatorship and terror, Father Iron? When I completely grasp military power, let the royal guards focus on the domestic situation, the East Factory focus on the officials, and the West Factory focus on the outside of the Ming Dynasty. I will do whatever I want to do in this world, it's great. As for the current unclear and overlapping functions of factory sanitation, as well as chaotic personnel relationships, Chongzhen stated that these are all temporary. After all, there is still a lot of overlap in the functions of the factory guard, Xing Department, Li Department, and Dali Temple. It doesn't matter, just sort it out slowly. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Who makes me and the people unhappy for a while? 
I want him from the nine tribes. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 8 Who Makes Me and the People Unhappy for a While I want him to be unhappy for all nine tribes. During this private visit to the palace, Chongzhen saw what he wanted to see and what he didn't want to see. For the previous edict of never adding taxes, it is widely rumored among the people outside that the emperor is truly a wise ruler for eternity. Could it be that the good emperor at first sight, under the secret promotion of the Dongchang Fanzi and the Jinyui, is simply far away from the Tang and Song dynasties, comparable to the three emperors and five emperors of the Holy Emperor. Chongzhen understood in his heart that as long as it continued to spread like this, he was both a wise ruler and a wise ruler. He already had the greatest basic plan. All the mud legs of the world stood behind him, and in order to protect his never-dot-ending interests, they could tear apart all the enemies blocking ahead. As for what I don't want to see, it's just that the ticket office of the Shofu family has been released. At that time, Shofu had some influence in the ticket office, and the money was also paid by the eight major locust merchants who later became Mitking. There were any undisclosed PY transactions in between, which could be imagined with just your toes. Chongzhen is very satisfied with his WeChat private interviews and believes that if someone were to film Chongzhen WeChat private interview in the future, what he saw and heard today would be very good materials, and the ratings would probably break the record. Chongzhen's good mood quickly dissipated upon returning to the palace. The reason why Chongzhen was unhappy was due to Chao Huachuan's report. Your Majesty, according to the reports from the children below, the current silver in Huang Liji's Huang family is about 200,000 taels, most of which comes from the Yongchang Ticket Bank's share income, and the rest is received as various forms of filial piety. If valuable items are also discounted, it is about 6 million taels. The Yongchang Ticket Office has also been checked, mainly established by the eight major businessmen from Shangxi, including Fan Yongdo. It is not only Huang who is involved, but also several other cabinet officials and various ministers and attendants, each ranging from tens of thousands to tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of tales. The servants have been organized into a fold and requested your majesty to make a final decision Emperor Chongzhen laughed back angrily and said, Okay, it's really great. My ministers, it's really great. The eunuch party and the Donglin party are such despicable things. It's really great. With just over a dozen ministers combined, it's even richer than the treasury of the Ming dynasty. In the eyes of Emperor Chongzhen, the mere establishment of slaves was not even a serious ailment, not even a minor ailment. At best, it was just a disease of scabies. During the establishment of the Ming dynasty, the Mongols fled northward and westward. After the death of Emperor Taizu Zhu Yuanzhang, Emperor Qingzu Zhu Di also led troops out of the frontier several times, kneeling down and singing the conquest of the Tartars. If it comes to the magnificent military power, which of the Mongol Yuan theories at that time was not much stronger than the Might Qing Tartars in terms of war potential or actual combat power, and was also subjected to friction on the ground. To put it bluntly, the reason why Jianu suffers losses now is that the infantry are not willing to fight, the cavalry are not awesome, and the ordnance and guns are easy to burst. In the final analysis, it is just a matter of money. If you have money, you have a good source of troops. If you have money, you can build better guns and cannons. If the quality is not good, you can return them. As long as you have money, you can be capricious. But reality has brought shame to Chongzhen. During the reign of Emperor Tianqi for seven years, Wei Zhongxian risked his life to hold money, and there were only a few million taels of silver in the national treasury. That's all, and he still owed the border army food and salaries. But just one Shofu family has six or seven million taels, which can even hold up to two national treasuries. Chongzhen's mood was poor, and he didn't call any concubines to sleep at night. He just sat in the imperial study all night. Wang Qingyan repeatedly advised him, but Chongzhen didn't pay attention. The next day, he went straight to court. Generally speaking, those who can live in temples are good at observing appearance. The courtiers can tell from Chongzhen's expression that it's going to be bad, 
and there might be a big problem today. After the courtiers finished their ceremony, Emperor Chongzhen spoke up directly. Today, if you have a copy but no copy, don't play it. If you have a copy, you can hand it over to the Imperial Household Department later. I have something to ask you today. Huang Aiching, you are the chief minister of the current dynasty. Let me ask you, how much did the Great Ming Treasury earn last year? How much did it leave? Huang Liji immediately left the class and reported, Your Majesty, last year is the sixth year of the Tianqi era, and the annual revenue of the National Treasury is more than 3.5 million taels. After various expenditures, the surplus. The surplus. The National Treasury still owes 15 million taels of silver to the border army. All right, the annual income of the Ming Dynasty's treasury is 3 million taels. It is said that the salaries of the officials in the Ming Dynasty were low, but your Huanggu hometown has more than 6 million taels, even more. I wonder how the Golao taught me. Chongzhen didn't want to act anymore and tore his face. Your Majesty, my lord, my lord. Huang Liji could no longer compile it. The emperor even knew the approximate number, and it must have been checked by the factory guards. If he denied it himself, it would probably be of no use. Wang Chengen, issue an edict. Chongjin was too lazy to take another look at Huang Liji and directly asked Wang Chengen to announce the edict he had drafted last night. As for being rejected or someone not following the edict, it's okay. The royal guards will teach them how to be a good person. Feng Tian Qingyun Emperor's Edict reads. After investigation, Huang Liji, the chief minister of the cabinet, was found to have embezzled and corrupted more than six million taels of silver, deeply disappointing my expectations. The Jin Yi Wei, Dong Chang, Dali Temple, the Ministry of Justice, and the Ministry of Personnel jointly plagiarized the family, and all the proceeds of his corruption were poured into the national treasury. The guilty minister Huang Liji, stripped of his skin and grass, hung at the meridian gate, and executed three clans in succession. I believe that those who came later will be punished. This is the imperial decree. After Wang Chengen finished reading the edict, General Han immediately approached and took away Huang Liji, who had collapsed on the ground, for disposal. After taking a moment to relax and glancing at the trembling ministers below, Emperor Chongzhen once again spoke up, Huang Liji, the first and second minister of my cabinet. Just a few days ago, I had high hopes for him. Today, I have to peel him off. Today's Ming dynasty is plagued by droughts, floods, and the resurgence of earth dragons. Natural disasters are rampant throughout the country, and people in the country are starving for food, even resorting to the practice of exchanging children for food. In addition, in Liaodong, there have been rebellions and rebellions by the Jianlu tribe, which can be considered a man.made disaster. It can be said that the Ming dynasty has reached its most critical moment, and even a slight mistake can lead to the downfall of the country and the extinction of its species. But what about you? You all stand on the dry shore, although each one sounds grand, where are you cleaner than Huang Liji? Fight for power. Seize profits. Hook hearts. Fight corners. Don't think about how to revitalize the Ming dynasty, instead keep digging into your own pockets for money. Yuwumu once said, civil officials should not be greedy for money, and generals should not be afraid of death. But look, look at my ministers. Civil officials are all thinking about how to make money, and generals are greedy for life and afraid of death. Noble officials also decay along with them. Tell me, which of your titles was not earned by your ancestors with their lives? Now you are squandering the legacy of your ancestors like this. You are not comparing who has made any contributions to the court, but comparing who is more greedy. Who is better at making money? I didn't sleep all night last night, so I sat in the imperial study all night. I was thinking, what's wrong with this country? I asked myself, I don't care about the lives of the people like Jia Zhou, nor do I care about them like Han Wu and Sui Yang. But why did Daiming end up like this today? Dear ministers, are you here to tell me that I have lost my virtue? 
I just issued an edict never to add taxes in the front, but in the back, you staged such a great show for me, hmm, it is said that the emperor worries about his subjects' humiliation, and the emperor insults his subjects to death, but I have not seen any such shadow on you. All I see is greed. If one of you rots, the Ming dynasty will rot. If all of you rots, these ordinary people who cannot afford to eat will be able to eat this court, including me and you all together. What kind of treatment is a fallen minister? All dynasties have written about it in history books. You can also be considered to have read poetry and books, but you have forgotten. I have something to tell you today. If one day the great Ming falls, I will hang myself on the crooked neck tree behind the coal mountain. But before that, I will definitely hang you all up. Let's all think about it carefully. If the skin doesn't exist, how can the hair be attached? If the Ming dynasty dies, will those mud legs who can't eat rice eat you first before you find a new master? Think about it all. That's all I've said. If anyone makes me and the people unhappy in the future, I'll make all nine of them unhappy. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 The First Step to Consolidate Military Power You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 The first step to consolidate military power copying Huang Liji's home had almost no impact on the Ming court, except for when Tiran who was promoted by Emperor Chongzhen as the head assistant, the rest had almost no changes. Including Wei Zhongxian, the leader of the eunuch party, he also applauded Emperor Chongzhen's decision. Wei Zhongxian didn't care about the fate of just one Huang Liji. If it weren't for someone more suitable than Huang Liji, Wei Zhongxian himself would have wanted to kill Huang Liji. However, what Wei Zhongxian had anticipated was the attitude of Emperor Chongzhen. When the chief minister of the court said he would kill him, he would kill him. Compared to the previous Emperor Tianqi, who cooked frogs in warm water and even killed himself, it was countless times more ruthless. While making up his mind to do his job well and obediently, Wei Zhongxian also strengthened the guard in the palace and secretly began to investigate the manpower in the palace. No matter what, there should be no more accidents like Emperor Wu and the late emperor. The Ming dynasty finally produced such a powerful emperor. If the good situation were to be destroyed again, Wei Zhongxian didn't know how to explain to the late emperor. Emperor Chongzhen, who knew nothing about this, was excited and wanted to cook hot pot and sing again. I have money now, and I don't even know how to spend it. I have a Nokia in my left hand and a Motorola in my right hand. Of course, this only exists in the imagination of Emperor Chongzhen, because more than six million tails of silver may seem like a lot, but if it were to be placed on a vast empire like the Ming Dynasty, it would really be nothing. Especially, there is still over ten million tails of silver owed to the border army. After September, even with the sun shining, the temperature in Pidao, this dilapidated place, is not much higher. Even if it can be slightly warmer at noon, it still feels cool from the skin to the bones in the morning and evening. In September of the seventh year of the Tianqi era, as the new year approached, the temperature here became even lower, and the people on the island would never come out of their houses. In the north, there is no situation like in the south where, it's winter and the house is too cold, let's go out and warm up. It has always been, it's too cold outside, don't go out today. But early this morning, the people on Pi Island came out early, not to bask in the sun, but to be welcomed by an angel. Being called out from the room to welcome the angel in the cold weather, probably no one would be happy. What's wrong with the emperor? Suddenly, he remembered the place where birds don't poop here. Isn't it urging us to go to war again? I don't know if the angel has brought some salary with him this time. The food and salary have been dragging on for several years, and the family has long been unable to afford it. Who knows, it would be great if the emperor could remember our place. The food and salaries are enough. I heard that the current emperor was dissatisfied with Wei Zhongxian when he believed in the king, and had a strong trust in the wise men of the Donglin party. It is estimated that Wan Sui Yi may have cleared the eunuch party, and we will have a good life in the future. Where did this idiot come from? 
cleaned up the eunuch party. Are you a damn pig? When did our commander dot in dot chief ask for food and forage, it wasn't all the eunuch party you mentioned that allocated it to us. When did all the old men in Dongwen remember us chubby guys? Damn it, could it be because our food and salaries were allocated by the eunuchs, so the emperor treated us as eunuchs too? Now that the emperor killed the eunuchs, he also treated us as rebels. Can't we? If we're also rebellious, why are we still working hard to defend Pi Island and become Tartars? Shouldn't it be? I heard that the current emperor is incredibly wise when he is hiding in his mansion. Shouldn't he treat us as rebels? As the saying goes, three people make a tiger, and everyone talks their hearts out. At first, they were just curious about how an angel came to Pi Island, spreading rumors. At this moment, it seemed like the emperor wanted to treat all the people on Pi Island as rebels, arrest and punish them. Mao Wenlong was standing in front of the procession welcoming the angels on the dock. When he heard the buzzing discussion behind him becoming more and more outrageous, he turned around and scolded, everyone is quiet. What's the noise like? Today, the emperor is wise and powerful, and candles shine for thousands of miles. There will definitely be no situation like what you said. The labor and capital are still standing here, and if anything happens, we should start with them first. What are you panicking about? If there is such nonsense, it will be punished by disturbing the morale of the military. It has to be said that Mao Wenlong's personality charm is indeed very high. In the original history, Mao Wenlong was killed by Yuan Chonghuan, the friend of the great Jin, who wielded the Shangfang sword and was skilled in killing him. The entire Dongjiang town was immediately divided and it was difficult to work together to cause trouble for Miqing anymore. Afterwards, Miqing can safely bypass the Ningjin defense line and head south without worrying about the rear. It must be said that Yuan Chonghuan is worthy of the great and glorious title of Miqing's friend. With Mao Wenlong's reprimand, the voices of discussion gradually stopped. Mao Wenlong himself felt uneasy again. Although he shouldn't have said this from the perspective of a courtier, Mao Wenlong couldn't help but want to say that the court is really two pitfalls. Dongjiang Town, this dilapidated place, was borrowed from North Korea, and supplies and military pay were almost never seen before. It was all up to oneself to find a solution, and what's even worse is that they didn't even replenish their soldiers, relying solely on their own deceit and deception. Mao Wenlong was secretly roast when he heard the assistant general standing next to him yell, Marshal, here comes the ship. Mao Wenlong stared intently and saw a warship clearly belonging to the Denglai fleet slowly approaching. Suddenly, an angel came to deliver an edict and requested to gather all the soldiers of Pai Island before announcing it. Mao Wenlong was also bewildered when he received the notification. He couldn't guess what new gameplay would be available today, and was even more worried that the emperor would slap his head and send him to fight against the Mike Chin Tartars. This is not impossible. When the emperor was hiding in his mansion today, he believed in the people of the Donglin party. Those civil officials didn't have a good thing, and even though they didn't understand the art of war, they always liked to force blindly. Yang Hao, that bastard, almost defeated all of Ming's family in one battle. Due to the fact that Pai Island is far from the mainland of the Ming dynasty, many things are not known in a timely manner, especially the fact that Emperor Chongzhen stripped the former head consort Han Yi of his skin and grass. At present, the people in the capital know that the current Prime Minister Huang Liji was greedy for more than six million taels of silver, so they all say that the emperor killed well. Outside the capital, there is already a faint rumor that the emperor is fond of killing and must be a tyrant. Rumors have begun to spread. Of course, the disseminators are all scholars. For the common people, what if a good emperor who orders never to increase taxes kills several ministers? It must be those treacherous ministers who deserve to be killed. No matter what Mao Wenlong thought in his heart, the ship carrying angels was getting closer and finally docked at the dock. When the angel got off the ship, Mao Wenlong's heart became even more uneasy. The angel who disembarked from the ship was not a certain civil and military minister, 
but a seemingly high-ranking attendant, followed by more than a dozen majestic Han generals. Mao Wenlong quickly stepped forward and said to the angel, the angel has been working hard from afar. I have already ordered someone to prepare wine and food. However, the land of Liaodong is bitter and cold, and I hope the angel can understand the simplicity. Mao Wenlong's posture is very low. In fact, Mao Wenlong not only prepared food and drinks, but also did his best to prepare 500 tails of silver. For generals like Mao Wenlong who were leading troops outside, it was impossible to expect any help from these dead eunuchs, but if they wanted to cause trouble, it was just a crooked mouth. The angel who came to announce the decree was none other than Wang Chengen, who was always around Emperor Chongzhen. In the plan of Emperor Chongzhen, Pai Island was an important part of future and even present plans. Emperor Chongzhen, who was too cautious, did not trust others to come and issue an edict. In the end, he sent Wang Chengen out. For Emperor Chongzhen, no one is more trustworthy than Fang Zhenghua, who died for his country in battle, and Wang Chengen, who hung himself on the coal mountain. The leader of the Eastern cult has extraordinary military strength and needs to be constantly by his side to protect himself. He had no choice but to send Wang Chengen out. As the eunuch who has been with Chongzhen for the longest time, although Chongzhen's thoughts have become difficult to understand recently, for Wang Chengen, who regards Chongzhen as his own heaven, he is very clear about how much the emperor values Mao Wenlong. After waving his hand with a smile, Wang Chengen said to Mao Wenlong, Marshal Mao, don't rush to eat this meal for now. When our family arrives, the emperor has instructed the soldiers of Pai Island. Although Mao Wenlong didn't look obvious on his face, a hint of concern flashed in his eyes. Wang Chengen smiled and said, General, feel relieved. It's a good thing for our family to come this time. Let's have all the soldiers go to the school field so that we can announce the emperor's edict and the will for Mao Dushui. Upon seeing this, Mao Wenlong's heart slightly calmed down, so he led the crowd and gathered around Wang Chengen and his group to walk towards the campus. Upon arriving at the schoolyard, Wang Chengen climbed onto the inspection platform, and the large Han general standing behind him all stood up. This was because he was afraid that Wang Chengen's voice might not be far enough alone, so he specially selected about ten loud Han generals. When Wang Chengen said a word, they followed suit and shouted to ensure that everyone on the schoolyard could hear him. Wang Chengen saw that everyone had already stood in their positions on the inspection platform, so he nodded and said, Our family is now reciting the imperial edict. He then shook the brush in his hand. More than ten great Han generals behind them all shouted out Wang Chengen's words. I, the emperor of the Ming dynasty, would like to say to all the soldiers who fought bravely to defend the Ming dynasty on the Pai Island in Liaodong. You have worked hard. I will send you your salary today. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Your Majesty's Order on Organic Secrets You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Your Majesty's Order on Organic Secrets I have prepared one million tales of silver. Everything is illusory, only silver is the most tangible. Emperor Chongzhen, who has traveled through time, is not as optimistic as Chongzhen, who was originally led astray, believing that relying solely on righteousness can make soldiers sacrifice their lives and shed their blood. The soldiers of the Ming dynasty are not the armies of the later dynasties, and they do not have any thoughts of military civilian unity, let alone the idea of defending their country. For the soldiers of the Ming dynasty, it is only natural for them to serve as soldiers and eat food. If they do not receive food and pay, they still expect the military master to work for them. If it weren't for their deep blood feud with Jianyu, if it weren't for having their own parents, wives, and children behind them, and if it weren't for being unable to retreat, these Chioba people on Pidao would have run away long ago. Emperor Chongzhen who had read many essential textbooks for travelers in later generations, knew very well that reality is not those TV dramas that rely on love to generate power. If you want to win people's hearts, you have to go for hard work. Nothing is harder than real gold and silver. So after raiding Huang Liji's home and obtaining several million tales of silver, 
Emperor Chongzhen did nothing else. The first thing he did was to have Wang Chenyan bring one million taels of silver to Pai Island to make up for the accumulated military pay over the years. Moreover, in order to help these illiterate Chuba people understand their meaning, Emperor Chongzhen specially used the oral form of vernacular. This is quite normal. The old Zhu family rose to fame in the late days, and there were many phrases in Zhu's imperial edict such as, I, you guys, work hard, go home early. Emperor Chongzhen's use of plain language was not particularly impressive. The effect was very obvious, and as soon as Wang Chengen's words fell, the soldiers gathered on Pai Island exploded first. Being a soldier is also divided into three, six, and nine classes. If the capital camp is born to one's own mother and the border army is raised by one's stepmother, then the soldiers on this side of Pai Island can only be considered as being raised by neighbors. I haven't seen what the salary looks like for four or five years. The imperial edict of Emperor Chongzhen conveyed by Wang Chengen is clearly not over yet. I know that the soldiers in Liaodong are suffering. Because you went deep into the enemy's rear and fought bravely on the front line, but you couldn't even get the most basic rations. This is the fault of me and the court officials. I assure you, and I also ask all the soldiers to trust me and give me five years. I will gradually make up for all the military salaries owed by the previous court. Whether it's the border troops in Jubian, the soldiers in Liaodong, or the soldiers in Jinying, I will make up for them one by one. I, your Emperor Ming, assure you that in the next five years, we must ensure that all our soldiers can eat well, dress warmly, and receive enough food and pay. In the future, your children will be able to study, become officials, engage in business, and engage in agriculture. Your relatives, I will receive the placement from the Ming dynasty, and there is no need for them to accompany you through hardships in Liaodong. I will not let the soldiers bleed and shed tears in the future. I will establish a martyr's shrine in front of Qingtian Gate. Any soldiers who sacrifice for the country will enter the martyr's shrine. Every Qingming festival, I personally lead civil and military officials to worship. As long as the great Ming dynasty does not perish, the loyal martyrs who sacrificed for the country will rest with the country and enjoy eternal blood and food. More than ten loud Han generals shouted out Wang Chengen's oral edict from Emperor Chongzhen in unison, ensuring that everyone on the campus could hear it clearly. Completely exploded, for the soldiers of Pai Island, the imperial edict from Emperor Chongzhen brought by Wang Chengen this time was not a bomb, but a large Ivan-level atomic bomb. The emperor has not forgotten us, he still remembers us. Almost everyone couldn't believe what they heard. Is this true? Our children can also study in the future. Finally going to pay. The little ones at home can finally stop starving, sob. Some people were already crying excitedly. One urge, do you think we can also enter the martyr's temple after we die? Some people have red eyes, tears in their eyes, and are so excited that they can't speak. They just feel that encountering such an emperor, their ancestors have accumulated virtue for eight lifetimes. Even if I die fighting for the emperor, it's worth it. Wang Chengyan stood on the inspection platform, watching the reactions of the soldiers in Dongjiang town below, while secretly nodding in his heart. Everything in front of him indicates that Emperor Chongzhen has achieved his desired goal. As long as the food and salaries are distributed bit by bit and the Emperor's promises are fulfilled bit by bit, the more than 10,000 soldiers under the leadership will be the Emperor's most loyal lackeys, and any enemy blocking the Emperor will be bitten to death by them. Tear it apart. Wang Chengyan coughed and said, Silence. It's convenient for Ping Liao to act as the commander-in-chief of the left army, Mao Wenlong, to take orders. Feng Tian Qingyun Emperor, made the following order. Based on Dongjiang town, it will be promoted to Dongjiang prefecture. In no time, the court will select officials at all levels to come here. As Dongjiang prefecture is isolated and suspended from the construction of slaves, it has specially established the Dongjiang army, which is directly under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of War and is not subject to the control of Liaodong in Denglai. Mao Wenlong, 
the commander of the left army, is appointed as the second rank general of the Dongjiang army. Mao Wenlong has also been implicated in the construction of slaves for meritorious deeds, and he is specially appointed as the crown prince Xiaobao. I am honored. As soon as this decree was issued, whether it was Mao Wenlong kneeling on stage or the soldiers from the original Pai Island, they all stood on the spot. In the Ming dynasty, a commanding officer like Mao Wenlong who controlled a region, although lacking in rank, was generally referred to as a certain commander, which sounded much more prestigious than any general. However, in reality, he was still subject to the constraints or jurisdiction of local governors. But as soon as the second rank general came out, it was immediately different. Because since the establishment of the Ming dynasty, there has never been a grand general established. The position of grand general was established in both the Han and Tang dynasties, and it was a real power that could be taken away with life and death, much stronger than any general. Now that the emperor has re-established the grand general and appointed Mao Wenlong as the grand general and the crown prince's deputy protector, this is almost a resounding signal. The state has begun to place great importance on martial artists, and their social status will rise in the future. Wang Chengyan saw Mao Wenlong kneeling down on the stage and didn't answer the order. He just lowered his hair and stared. He immediately raised his voice and said, General. Are you still not obeying the order? Mao Wenlong, who was standing in the audience, suddenly realized and raised his head. His tiger eyes were filled with tears and excitement, and he couldn't help but tremble and choked up, saying, Your Majesty, I am not despicable. I have treated you with kindness until this point. I wish I could die to repay Your Majesty's kindness. I, Mao Wenlong, accept the order, long live my emperor. Long live. Long live. After Mao Wenlong took the decree, Wang Chengen slowly stepped down from the inspection platform and helped Mao Wenlong up, saying, Good. 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 General, you are truly a kind hearted person. It's not in vain that your majesty values you. At this moment, Mao Wenlong's heart was stirred and he felt grateful for the kindness of Emperor Chongzhen who did not consider his own background and was simplified to this point. He loudly said to Wang Chengen, Please reply to your majesty on behalf of me. Your majesty's kindness will never be repaid in the face of death. From now on, I will definitely be loyal to the king. Your majesty has a destiny, not to mention the mountains and seas of war. I will definitely not frown at the end. Upon receiving Mao Wenlong's pledge of loyalty, Wang Chengen was also delighted for Chongzhen. Remembering Chongzhen's instructions before departure, he said to Mao Wenlong, General, please take our family to the big tent. Your Majesty has another secret matter to attend to. He instructed our family to personally inform General. End of this chapter